Good afternoon, everybody. This is Miss Summers with your notes today on air pressure and weather. The point of this or the goal today, we want to be able to predict weather based on air pressure systems. So what weather is associated with both high and lows? So we'll look at that in addition to what causes differences in air pressures as well as how pressure is related to wind. So let's begin with what is air pressure. Air pressure is the weight of the air pushing down on the earth. So we usually don't think of air as weighing a lot, but it actually there's so much of it. Think about it, there's over 100 miles of atmosphere above us. All of that is pushing down on us, and that creates a pressure. We measure air pressure using an instrument called a barometer. Basically what it does Air is pushing down on this substance called mercury, which is like a silvery liquid metal. And that as the air pressure increases, it pushes this mercury up this tube. So it can be measured in either inches of mercury, which is HG, that's the symbol for it, or in millibars. I don't really care if you know either of those. All right, but it's more air pressure, this value will get higher. As air pressure decreases or goes down, this pressure, this value will drop. Okay, so let's compare and contrast high pressure and low pressure systems. In areas of high pressure, cold air will sink down. Remember, cold air is more dense. And because the air is sinking, all the moisture that goes along with that is down here at the ground and not up here. So this will lead to clear skies and good weather. So high pressure is really, really awesome, especially in the summertime. It's, the air is gonna be fairly dry. You're not gonna have any clouds, no chance of rain, all around a great time. So we're gonna remember this by saying hooray for high pressure. High pressure is gonna be good weather. In the Northern Hemisphere, High pressure systems are going to rotate or turn clockwise. So clockwise would be this way. Think about a clock. The hands of the clock go like this. Oh, go back, my bad. All right, so clockwise, high pressure. Air sinks, clear, sunny skies. All right. We're going to contrast that to a low pressure system. In a low pressure, warm air rises. So remember, warm air likes to spread out so it's not all close together. The air rises. Whenever air rises, that's when clouds form. And clouds are what brings weather to us. Weather in the form of rain and thunderstorm and snow and just yucky stuff like that. So low pressure is lousy or bad weather. So hooray, high pressure is fair weather. Lousy low pressure is going to be weather that is not so fun. Like last week when it rained nonstop. That was a low pressure. This week it's nice and sunny. High pressure. All right, low pressure in the northern hemisphere is going to rotate counterclockwise. So picture this as a clock counterclockwise or to the left. So low to the left. Now you might recognize this picture as a hurricane, which is exactly what it is. The reason I put this on here, all hurricanes in the northern hemisphere rotate to the left. And that's because they're great big pressures of low, si or excuse me, they're great big systems of low pressure. So they are going to rotate like that. So to round off this conversation of us, or this little little mini lecture. Let's talk about wind and pressure. Wind is caused by differences in air pressure. All right, that is all it is. Wind is going to blow from areas of high pressure where the air molecules are really tight together to areas of low pressure. So they're going to want to try to equal themselves out. That's what is happening. The greater the pressure difference, the stronger the storm, or excuse me, the stronger the wind will be. So in a hurricane, remember, a hurricane is an area of low pressure. The stronger the hurricane is, that means it's very low pressure. So that means super low pressure, which is going to lead to very strong winds, and that makes for a strong hurricane. 
Now we can tell or predict how bad winds are going to be on a map by looking at something that looks like this. So you remember how pressure is measured in a barometer? Well, here's that bar again. On a map, pressure is shown in isobars. So this circle, this line, all is one single air pressure. This line is another air pressure that's a little bit lower. This line is another set of air pressure. All right, so it's kind of like a topographical map. Just like a topographical map, if the bars are really close, that means something. On a topographic map, if the bars are really close, like this, that means you have a sudden change in elevation. Well, if the isobars are very close here, that means you have a sudden change in air pressure, and that's going to result in very strong winds. So this particular one, I don't know if you can see down here, we have an area of very low pressure, 984, that's super low, and the bars are fairly close together. That means in this particular area, you're going to have very, very strong winds. This is the pressure map that was recorded when Hurricane Katrina made landfall over New Orleans in 2005, which makes sense. Hurricanes equal strong wind. So, pressure is the weight of air. High pressure, hooray, high pressure is good weather. Lousy low pressure will lead to bad weather. And differences in pressure make wind. All right, that is all I have for you today. If you have any questions, you need to ask them right away. And if not, you may move on to your next assignment. Thank you.